Hi guys, so George Eustace, the Environment Secretary, was interviewed by Nick Robinson of the Today programme, where he was challenged on the damage Brexit is doing to the economy, not just now, but also for the next number of years. He showed complete indifference to this. Actually, I'm wrong. He wasn't indifferent to the problems of Brexit. He was happy with the consequences of leaving the European Union. Now, on the one side, you have a damaged economy, fewer freedoms for citizens, self-imposed trade barriers with your nearest neighbours and largest market, the ending of freedom of movement, which has resulted in a shortage of workers, which have led to rotting food in fields and farmers slaughtering their own animals, empty supermarket shelves, and finally the legalisation of sewage being pumped into rivers and lakes, to name just a few of the problems of Brexit. You have that on one side, and on the other side, sovereignty. Take it away, George. No, my contention right is you've do. got to live with the consequences of something you've spent your whole career arguing for, uh, which is Brexit. We heard the Office for Budget Responsibility this week say that the long-term economic consequence of Brexit would be double that, double of the pandemic, a 4% reduction in the long-run potential of the economy. Uh, and I'm putting it to you that uh, your government should not uh, play diplomatic warfare. You need to get this sorted out. Well, I'm quite happy to, to live with the, the consequences of leaving uh, the EU. Uh... Of course he's happy with the consequences of leaving the EU because they do not affect him. He's an MP. He's a minister. He's financially protected from this. He doesn't have to export goods into the European Union. He doesn't have to uh, run a farm. He doesn't have to do any of these things. He doesn't suffer the consequences of what he campaigned for. Remember, George Eustace used to be a member of UKIP. Then he jumped on board Boris Johnson's Brexit bus. He used to be a, a, he was a supporter of a hard Brexit, a harder Brexit than this. He would have wanted people to suffer much more than they are at the moment. And of course he's happy with the consequences because once again, he's not affected by them. Uh, we are a self-governing country again for the first time in decades. We're controlling our own uh, waters. We've got an increasing uh, fishing quota for our fishermen. Uh, we're changing our agriculture policy completely. Uh, we, we've got that uh, freedom to have coherent, good policy. Uh <laughs> we have the freedom to suffer. The European Union were protecting us from all of the, the consequences that we're facing at the moment. But now we have the freedom to slaughter our own animals. We have the freedom to have empty supermarket shelves. We have, we have all these freedoms now. Once again, he's not suffering the consequences. The Tories are not suffering the consequences. Ordinary people are. Ordinary business owners are. Ordinary farmers are. You know, somebody that he should actually be looking out for. And this this old figure uh, about the you know the impacts of, of Brexit we've heard all of that before. It's not an old figure; going, it's a brand new figure well, by the uh, government's appointed I, Office for Budget Responsibility, I seem who to are recall, the country's official national forecasters. I do I do recall hearing this uh, this figure uh, back in the the mist of time during. This, now this is something that was brought up by another Brexit here. This is an old figure. This is what was said in the past. No, it's not. This is a lie. The Office of Budget Responsibility released this figure this week and it's based on data collected this year. It's a prediction for the future. Now, is it 100% guaranteed? No, it's not. It's a prediction. But that's how governments operate. Governments operate on predictions, on forecasts for the future. But the forecast for the future because of Brexit is grim. And instead of actually dealing with reality, George Eustace is living on another planet. Those, uh, those angry debates over Brexit. Mm. But look, can you, uh, can, the you point is... can you point to some increase in economic activity or trade as a result of Brexit? Yeah, well, obviously, we've got um, uh, trade agreements that we've been making with other countries around the world. Which we had trade agreements with before uh, yes, as members the of the EU. Uh, well, uh, that's not uh, correct. We've obviously got an agreement in principle now with countries like Australia as well. But the most important thing is you, you get um, economic growth um, through innovation, through science, uh, through the, uh, the right regulatory uh, approach in your economy that's what gives you growth and you're better able to deliver that as a as a self-governing now but if you look at a country like germany germany is a member of the european union and is a powerhouse in europe surely if we're using george eustace's logic germany should be uh, on its knees at the moment over the last number of decades germany should have been uh, an economic backwater but it's not 
his argument we need to leave the European Union in order to improve the economy has fallen flat on its face because we're seeing that the economy is worse off because of Brexit. He, has, he doesn't have an argument, an argumental leg to stand on here. And he mentioned trade deals, but the trade deals, the most recent ones with Australia, Japan and New Zealand, are worse off for the UK economy. Or at the most, they increase the economy by very, very little. They improve the economy very, very little. So he can't use these as, this is an argument for why we should have left the European Union. On the one side, you have an absolute failure. And on, the other, on, on, on his side, he's saying, yeah, we have a few trade deals. And we're able to control our waters. How does that help people who are struggling at the moment to sell goods into the, their biggest market, the European Union? How does that help people who need to find heavy goods vehicle drivers to deliver their goods to supermarkets? How does that help supermarkets who have empty supermarket shelves? This is the Brexiteer mentality. Now, what's very interesting about all of this, and I've raised it before, is when it came to the pandemic, the British government, the Brexiteer government, I should say, was happy to say, look, this is a crisis. We need to do everything we can. We need to solve it. We need to throw as much money at the problem as possible. But when it comes to Brexit, which is twice as bad, they're saying, no, no, everything is okay. Yeah, it's a bit of a bump in the road, but don't worry about it. Complete denial. But this is the Brexit mentality. This is the cult-like mentality. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.